I wanted to do a little video about how I change out my Omnipod and how that all works. Uh, we're actually camping right now. My wife Emily is filming this. We're at the Kootenay National Park in, uh, um, in British Columbia, Canada. So um, I have my Dexcom hooked up to my phone. So if I turn my phone on, I have it set up. I can swipe right. Yeah, see how you're okay. And that's my Dexcom. That's what my glucose value is right now. It's usually a little higher in the morning. I probably need to adjust that so that I get more insulin just before I wake up. But I'm at 151 right now. And the way that this works is, you know that the Dexcom is hooked up to my phone. But this is my PDM for my Omnipod. And yeah, it's hard to see. Lots of reflection. Anyway, um, let me just uh, push in my code and it, and it will show me, it reads my CGM value off of my phone. So I'm at 151, I have 0.7 units on board. Um, but it's time to change this pod out. So I'm going to change, change the pod, pod info, view pod details. There we go. Change pod, deactivate pod. So it's deactivating the, the pod that is on my back currently right here. That's deactivated. I'm going to take that guy off. They come off pretty easy. And sometimes they get knocked off unintentionally unfortunately and then it says uh set up new pod so at this point i take a new pod open it up it comes with its own syringe and needle of sorts brand new bottle of uh, fias benzolin which is what i use uh, now, Fiasp is, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a, a faster acting insulin. And I, the last video I screwed up, I actually give myself about 150 units in here just to be safe, but I can go up to 200 in a in an Omnipod. So that's for a three day supply. And I always uh, end up with more in the pod. And I don't worry about trying to get the old insulin out of the pod because I'm generally not on these wild, wait for those beeps. So now I usually, I'm usually not so, uh, so concerned with throwing away a little bit of insulin. Um, and one reason is that the insulin's been in the pod for three days, unrefrigerated, that kind of stuff. And I feel like if I take that out, put it in another pod, you know, when, at, what, at what point do I run the risk of the insulin not being any good? Okay. So the, the insulin's in the pod, set up pod. Now it's gonna, now it's, it's, show, it's showing me, it's showing me to add the insulin in the pod, which I already did. And now it's priming the pod. And this will take a few minutes. One of the problems with this system, one of the many problems is that this screen is not very bright. I have the brightness turned all the way up actually. And when I'm out on a bike ride with my sunglasses on, I can't read this. I have to stop, take off my sunglasses to read the screen and uh, that can be an issue if I'm having one of a roller coaster day and I'm having to give myself insulin and that kind of stuff often. All right, so now I'm just gonna put an alcohol swab on my skin where I'm gonna put the pod. So I put, I have basically four spots in my body where I put Dexcom and the Omnipods on the back of my arms on each side and then on my lower back here on each side where you just talk, saw me take off the pod. But I try to rotate them around and move them around a little bit. Drinking some coffee. I know you guys have been having some, some good coffee lately on your trip, it looks like. I'm jealous. Uh, 
Okay, this now this is maybe you can get get that view. You can see that it, it's showing that it's it's ready. So at this point I, I take the needle cap off of the Omnipod and I take the two stickers off. At this point I just stick it on. We'll go around and make sure that it's secure all around and I push it down real good and then I push start and it's pod securely in place yes so at this point it primes the pod a few more times and then it's going to inject a needle into my skin and um, there it goes just injected the needle I don't know if you heard that and then uh, there's a couple more steps here I'm just going to tell it I'm going to tell it that yes, yes, it, in, it inserted okay, yes, automatic mode, it's turning on out of automatic mode, now I'm ready to go, back up into business, and then uh, you can see this is showing that it's connecting with my, my Dexcom, my CGM, and it can take up to 20 minutes. I've only had one time in the last two and a half months that I've been using the system that it hasn't connected and I've had to tell it to try to reconnect again and it, and it did. That was not a problem. So that's that. Um, hope that helped, Brian. I'm going to run through the dosing process for the Omnipod 5 using the PDM supplied by Omnipod since they don't have an app for the iPhone yet. Okay, so first step is to turn the screen on. It gives you the time, the date. My insulin on board, which is zero units. Swipe up. I type in my passcode. You can see that it's reading my Dexcom off my phone. I'm at 117. Um, my last bolus was 7.7 .7 units. That was at lunch. My CGM graph basically is the same as the Dexcom graph. And um, to dose, you hit this little insulin icon here. And you have to use use CGM so that it knows I'm at 117 now. And then um, in the mornings, I just when I'm when I'm high and I haven't eaten, I'll just do this and I'll put like half a unit or whatever. But when I'm dosing for meals, um, I'm eating some delicious Canadian maple cookies right now. So I'm going to put 25 grams of carbs. Um, hit the check mark. And it's calculating my insulin sensitivity. And if I had any insulin on board, it's always it's also taking that into account. Uh, account. Anyway, it's suggesting 1.4 units here. I can change that, but I'm going to confirm. i just give myself 1.4 units. Hit start. And it's as easy as that. So, I'll give you 1.4 units and tell me it's done. Hope that helps. So I just wanted to make a point that, um, you know, using an insulin pump is complicated. Uh, there's more effort involved in some ways. It's easier in other ways. You don't have to think about your blood sugars as much, possibly. Uh, but it's also more expensive and you have to carry more with you on a trip. But the main takeaway for me is that you get off of the long-acting insulins and so what it does is it creates a much more spontaneous lifestyle like for instance my wife and I were in the van earlier it was rainy this morning it was cold didn't look like a bike ride was going to happen and then the sun came out it was glorious we had already eaten it was about I don't know 10 o'clock in the morning or so and I was able to just put my pump on activity mode which is part of the 
Omnipod 5, which keeps my blood sugar at 150 or below, or it tries to. And uh, anyway, I didn't have to plan for it. I didn't, if I had been on long acting insulin and I dosed a full amount, dosed a full amount for breakfast, uh, I would have gone low on this ride. And that didn't happen uh, with me today. Part of that is because I'm using uh, Fiasp insulin and it's fast acting, gets in and out of your body a little bit faster. No long acting insulin. And so I don't have to plan ahead so much. I can be more spontaneous. So that's the main takeaway. Having said all that and thinking about this more after creating these videos, I'm realizing the benefits of uh, multiple daily injections. I'm doing a probably take five or six week bike tour across the country uh, soon and multiple daily injections might be the way to go. It'd be so much easier. I know that I'm going to be riding, trying to ride 100 miles a day and it'll be kind of a sustained effort. So once I figure out if I'm on multiple daily injections, if I figure out what my long acne insulin dose is for the day, every 12 hours and then I can just dose appropriately for meals while I'm doing those activities, it might, might work out better. So anyway, that's my takeaway. Thanks.